famine, and besieged Samaria. Sometime later, Ben-Hadad, king of Aram, mobilized his entire army and marched up and laid siege to Samaria. There was a great famine in the city. The siege lasted so long that a donkey's head sold for 80 shekels of silver and a quarter of a cab of seed pods for five shekels. As the king of Israel was passed by on the wall, a woman cried to him, Help me, my lord, the king. The king replied, If the lord does not help you, where can I get help for you? From the threshing floor? From the wine press? Then he asked her, What's the matter? So, as we can see, the king of Israel is not really <laughs> faithful or trusting into the Lord, right? So he's just kind of like, if the Lord's not helping me, what do you think I can do? Because <laughs> it's a famine. So let's continue to read. She answered, this woman said to me, give up your son so we may eat him today and tomorrow we'll eat my son. So we cooked my son and ate him. The next day I said to her, give up your son so we may eat him. But she had hidden him. This is extremely difficult because here you have Israel that at this point, generation, generation after generation after generation now has rejected the Lord and the and they knew, they knew from the beginning when the Lord gave them the land and they did the blessings and the cursings. And they said that we would, as a people, follow the Lord. We won't turn from the right or to the left. And instead, generation and after generation after generation, this has happened. And the Lord's now sending prophet after prophet after seer after prophet after seer after prophet to warn and help. We're as much as possible but they're refusing and so he told them he told them before it was prophecy that if they did prostitute themselves like worship other idols do detestable things not follow the law not follow the rules and such that bad things would happen and now they're to the point where they're doing things that the canaanites did before them did including eating each other it shows you just how bad humanity can get. It gives you a window into understanding that the slippery slope is a slippery slope. It's a slope and it can go down pretty quickly. And it shows us just how far people will go. Let's continue to read. When the king heard the woman's words, he tore his robes. As he went along the wall, the people looked, and there, underneath, he had sackcloth on his body. He said, May God deal with me, be it ever so severely, if the head of Elijah, son of Shaphat, remains on his shoulders today. So this person, this ruler, was blaming Elijah, who was a prophet of the Lord. He was blaming Elijah for him in his kingdom, not following the Lord, not doing what they were supposed to be doing, not relying on the Lord by worshiping false prophets or false gods, by listening to false prophets. prophets. And so here, he, to a point where bad things are good and good things are bad. And that's what we're seeing here. And so let's continue to read. Now Elijah was sitting in his house, and the elders were sitting with him. The king sent a messenger ahead, but before he arrived, Elijah said to the elders, Don't you see how this murderer is sending someone to cut off my head? Elijah already knew. Look, when the messenger comes, shut the door and hold it shut against him. Is not the sound of his master's footsteps behind him? While he was still talking to them, the messenger came down to him, and the king and, uh, and the king said, "This disaster is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer?" So literally, the king of Israel is blaming the Lord. <laughs> like, instead of humbling himself, instead of acknowledging, "Yes, I'm a sinner. 
yes, I was not, we were not worshiping you. We were not following the commands. We were not um, relying on you. We were relying on what have you. Instead of humbling himself, he doesn't. He acts pompous and arrogant. Think about it. When times get tough, do we do those things? Do we think, oh, I can solve this. I can, we can do, and then it gets worse. Think about that in our lives. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think?